I know, I know, richest black man in the world, right? He said, Fuzzy, no more chicken and fried chicken and watermelon jokes for me, baby. I'm in there. <laughs> he went out and got him white. I mean, she ain't even got blonde hair. She got white hair. I mean, he went all the way to the cave, right? But then Tillman had to tell him, no, no, sir. She got on the radio, looked just almost like the, 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 the female, they almost look alike, don't they? I just can't tell them about me. Maybe they don't look alike. I don't know. She said, the only way y'all going to beat Tiger Woods is to take him in a back alley and lynch him. Tiger said, no, but I'm in. I'm one of y'all now. No, no, no. How many people in here seen the terrorism from the entertainment uh, series? How many, how many of y'all saw that? Terrorism from the entertainment industry. Uh, Hip-hop culture Zionism. Y'all got to check that out. It's one little part, and I don't know if y'all remember, but it's a sister, and she's rapping against this European white male. You know, they doing this little rap. It's a terrible thing. But the sister said something. I never forgot it either. It was funny. You know, you white boy, you trying to get in the rap game? She leaned over and said, you ain't getting in. Now she said, you ain't getting in. And that's what the white folks are telling a lot of black people trying to lead a black race, thinking that they can get with a white girl. It's just, you can get with a white boy, and all your troubles going to wash away. No, no, no. White folks will tell you every time, you ain't getting in. Right. Matter of fact, for all our brothers and sisters out there thinking they're going to get out the race, can we give them on three? Can we give them just one good, you ain't getting in? One, two, three, you ain't getting in. You ain't getting in. I'm telling you. Y'all to let them know. We're going to do something different than we normally do today. We're going to use a reference, a source that's best suited to serve our research. It's a source that black people don't give enough attention because it gives us the, the answers that we need. We're going to use the Bible today, and we're going to use it as the reference throughout this lecture. Absolutely, absolutely. We're going to use uh, Chancellor, Ver Chancellor Williams' version. <laughs> Destruction of Black... What? Oh, okay, okay. We're we black, right? What are y'all, integrationists? You think I'm going to use the white man's Bible? Come on, man. I do not have an integration lecture. The Destruction of Black Civilization, Great Issues of a Race from 4500 B.C. to 2080. That's, that's 6,500 years. Chancellor Williams looked at Tiger Woods and so many other brothers and sisters in the chapter of View from the Bridge. He said, those Negroes who are so frantically fighting to escape from the African race by way of integration and amalgamation will continue to meet everlasting and universal opposition from the whites. In other words, Dr. Chancellor Williams, in a very eloquent way, is telling them what? You ain't getting in. <laughs> there it is right there. Hey, what are we talking about when we say integration? Many black people think we talk about integration, we talk about something that happened in the 1950s. You know, we try to get, no, no, no. Integration has been going on for over 5,000 years. And we're going to talk about what are the main ingredients of integration so we know exactly what we're talking about. First, we're talking about the forced or voluntary acceptance of white mates as sexual partners and or husbands and wives for African people. In other words, you know, that horizontal innovation. Sexual contact with Europeans. That's one of the ingredients. When we're talking about integration, that's what we're talking about. It's also most commonly referred to as race mixing. We call it as part of what we call white sex. Uh, other terms, amalgamation, mongrelization, miscegenation. All it means is white folks and black folks going like this. Second component of integration, the forced or voluntary acceptance of white standards of thinking and behavior in exchange for indigenous ways of thinking and behavior. A process we call race whitening. What are we talking about when we say race whitening? Let's look at the Native Americans. Before the European came to the Americas, the Native American, he had his own language. He had his own culture. He had his own songs. He had his, uh, he had his own complexion. That's why we said a red man. After the European came, he taught them how to eat, taught them how to feed. Now, they use the European's language. They wear the European's names. And most times, if you look at their skin complexion, you can't even identify them as Native Americans. They've even lost their skin complexion. When a race loses its culture, those things that define it, for another race, we call that race whitening. And it's a process that's been going on all over the planet. So we clear on what we're talking about when we say integration? Yes, sir. All right. Now, all right. Well, we don't have time today, but I wanted to put this up here because it's very important. We don't have time today to establish all of the history of our people, all of the great things that black people have achieved. So I just put this up here for as a resource because black people, in order to know where we are, we gotta know where we came from. What does it mean about the condition we're in that's so bad if we don't know all of the things that we've done that was great, the great condition we was in? But we don't have time to do that today, so these are some sources that you can start with. 
that can help you understand and we can establish the greatness of African civilization, of black history. So those are up there for you to check out and do your own research. But the question we gotta ask today is not how black civilization was developed, but how was black civilization destroyed? How did we go from building Hormakit, Haru on the horizon, right? On the Giza Plateau. The most ancient and magnificent colossal standing on planet Earth. To the point today we barely even make toilet tissue. Mm -hmm. How do we go there? And Dr. Chancellor Williams tells us there's two main components that destroy our civilizations. One, the white Asiatics, we call them Asiatics because that was before there was a place called Europe, just white folks, right. would come on down into Kemet, land of our ancestors, now called Egypt, and they would marry into the royal family. You would let them marry into the royal families. Eventually, the royal families would become white, and when they got their opportunity, they used the second piece. They would invite invading armies of whites from Asia when they had the power to come down and, and commit genocide or attempt to commit genocide on the black people who had let them in to begin with. A two-way process. And it's been going on for thousands of years over and over and over again, brothers and sisters. And you look, it ain't nothing we don't know about. Right. You get a strong black organization, right? right? Invariably, some black person wants to invite somebody white in. Yeah. Soon as the white folks come in, the strongest of the black people are like, I'm not staying here. I didn't come in for this. I wanted to work with black. They leave. Right. Now you only got weak brothers and sisters and Negroes and white folks. The white folks end up invariably after two months, a year or so, running the organization. Now your black organization defunct by way of what? Integration. Yes, <laughs> it ain't even hard. It's been going on for 5,000 years. Dr. Chancellor Williams tells us, he says, the great majority of ancient black people took great pride in our color as our resistance to amalgamation, which is race mixing, may be so interpreted. For one thing we observed in Kemet was that a dynasty, that's a, a, a royal ruling family, right. beginning as all black could become near white in color with not a black face in the royal lineage. This two-way process of intermingling and direct aggression meant victory for the white Asians in the end. The theme of this lecture, brothers and sisters, contrary to everything we've been taught, integration is the key element in the destruction of black civilization. Repeat it after me, we gotta say this together. Integration, integration. is the key element, the key element. In, the in the destruction of black civilization. Of black civilization. That sounded good. Say it for you, I want y'all to do it by yourself one time. Go ahead, let me hear that. I like that, I think we got it today. So let's go after this, let's go take a look at integration and what it's done now. The way we're gonna do this, if we're talking about integrating with whites, first we got to talk about who are we talking about integrating with. So we define whites. Whites are a barbaric race of subhumans whose inherent disposition is the destruction of all life. Now some people hear that and some people say, well, I mean, is that an insult? No, we're not insulting Europeans. We're telling the truth. Hue is what we call, it's called color. And there's a substance in, our, in, our, in, in all human beings called melanin, which determines the amount of hue. Black people have the highest concentration of melanin, which is why we are the darkest people on the planet. Europeans have the least amount of melanin. It is unnatural and a sickness to have a deficiency in the amount of melanin. And Europeans are the race on the planet with the deficient amount of melanin. Why is that important? Melanin absorbs the sun's rays. Melanin absorbs sound. That's why black people, we got rhythm. Melanin, you, you know we got rhythm. Now come on. I ain't got to show you. The, no. You know. But it's a key ingredient that deals with the human character and helps explain why some people can get along with those things around them in the universe and have an understanding for the respect of all life and others don't. We talk about those others, we talk about Europeans. So when we say subhumans, it's not an insult. It means they don't have the appropriate amount of hue that we would expect them to operate with normal, civilized human behavior. We say whose inherent disposition is the destruction of all life. Now, there's not one of us in here that cannot attest to what Europeans have been doing since they've been on planet Earth. Warfare and destruction, nuclear bomb here. Slavery, we know about that, right? Mutilation and oppression. Here we see torture and murder. This is our, this only a few years ago in Somalia. A little brother uh, wanted to get some fresh water. The white mercenary soldiers invite him over, then roast them over a fire. Mm. We see child sexual assault with the homosexuals just going all after our children, having a ball. Sexual perversion, gang rape. You know, the Europeans said they're going to go over to Iraq and take freedom. And freedom and democracy. So that's how you get democracy and freedom is to take somebody's mother, rape her, 
videotaping and send it across the world so all the world can see it? I don't want that kind of freedom. Genocidal massacres, we see here in the Bush Brown massacre, we call Hurricane Katrina. They blow up some levees, then fly over top of black people drowning in the water and just watching it, then call them refugees. Right. So a refugee is a person that you drown, they can't get out when you got the boats to save them, I guess. We look here, this is a, it looks like a mountain, right? right? See this European standing on top? When they wanted to clear the West out of the Native American, the red man and the red woman, whose natural home this was, and it belonged to them, many of them they couldn't beat by warfare, so they made a decision. The Native American used the buffalo for his food, clothing, and shelter, which meant no buffalo, no Native American life. So they went on a systematic process, killing, I think it was close to 50 million, but just slaughtering them. These are heads piled up of buffalo heads, just slaughter them just so they can kill out the Native Americans. So now, like I said, this is all stuff we witnessed. We're going to have to have some serious dialogue because the question for us is, after having 2,000 years of being under the oppressive rule of this type of race with this type of character, how has it impacted us? So what we're going to do, we're going to start on the surface, some things that we can see that all of us are aware of, and then we're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper and see why we say integration is the key element in the destruction of black civilization. Before we go into it, I want to say it again. Please, brothers and sisters, honestly, it's a real difficult task. You know, I used to wonder, because my mother used to tell me, this, this behind whooping I'm giving you hurts me more than you hurts you, you know? I'd be like, you lying. <laughs> Ain't no way you hurt more than I'm hurting right now. Because you was, you'd be crying like I'm crying right now. But honestly, I love black people. I have no intention to come up here and make a person feel bad about it. So please, don't spend two minutes feeling bad about anything you hear here. The objective is to say, okay, that's right. This is where we are. Okay, now we know this is not our behavior. So now let's go back and let, let, let's change it. Let's make sure we don't pass it on. Is that all right, brothers? Can we talk? Yes, sir. We're going to start it off with a serious discussion of culture. Let's talk about culture. Culture, start with tattoos. Our ancestors left this. These are thousands of year old drawings after Thousands of years of fighting with these whites that we kept letting come in and they rape and torture and murder our people and says, these are your enemies. When you see them coming, prepare for battle and make sure that you win because to lose is to lose. And they said, how do you know? One of the things they said was so, they described them as the spiritless race, a race that did not know God. And they said, one of the ways you know is because God gives us this temple. And they go, and you know, the Europeans in the caves and hills of Europe, they were white and living without melanin. So when they would go around the world and see other races, they would see that they had complexion, skin, hue. And so they would feel naked. So they would just sit down and write all over their bodies. Right. And our ancestors said, anybody who would write on their bodies, you know what kind of mentality you're dealing with. They don't even respect the, their own temple. Right. Much less would they respect anything else they come in contact with. And so we say, our ancestors told us, right? We say like fathers, like their sons and daughters, right? The European ain't changed one bit over these past five, six, seven, eight thousand years. And you can expect and understand why somebody with that lifeless pale skin might decide they want to add some life by writing on themselves with brothers and sisters. It's not us, brothers and sisters. It's a trashy practice from a trashy race. We're beautiful people. We come in all skin complexions. And all of them are beautiful. We're not devoid of melanin, hence, we don't need to write on ourselves. And I don't want anybody to feel bad about it. What I'm saying is that this is not us. This is something we picked up being under the oppressive whims of Europeans. And I want to say something. It comes, in particular in modern times, it comes from homosexual white culture. And right now, black men and black people in general are mimicking homosexual white culture. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, do not. Do not beat yourself up about it. You got it, you got it. That's not an issue. That doesn't change your character. You didn't know any better. And we weren't, look, none of us was really looking at this the right way, but we're looking at it the right way now.